I'll say it, coffee roasting is a strenuous job. It's a lot of moving around, lifting heavy things, standing for hours on end, and other physically demanding tasks. If only there were an exercise program for roasters to work the muscles we use daily. Luckily, Kevin Mejia is a physical trainer and coffee roaster. He wrote an article in the most recent issue of Coffee People Zine on that exact topic. Functional movement for roasters. Exercises to stretch and strengthen the muscles coffee roasters use every day. This video focuses on the first set of exercises targeting shoulder mobility and strength. This isn't a full training program, but if you do these movements a few times a week, you'll build strength and hopefully make your daily roasting tasks a little more manageable. Definitely check in with a trainer or a physical therapist if you have mobility concerns and stop if you experience any pain while doing these movements. But I'll jump out of the way and let Kevin take it from here. Hey Roasters, I'm Kevin Mejia from Bevel Coffee and I'm here to show you some exercises to help you with your roast day. You know those days, long, achy, you've got those elbows that are hurting from scooping coffee all day or your back hurts from picking up coffee. Well, I, before becoming a roaster, was a coach and I wanted to take all the knowledge that I have amassed over the years of coaching and help you guys out with some of those aches and pains. So follow along. We're gonna have a whole video series. I wanted to go ahead and start with the shoulders because uh, like I mentioned, when you're scooping and you're standing at the computer, you're on the keyboard or whatever it is and you're on the mouse, more often than not, elbows, shoulders are gonna to start to get some pain. Now, if you start to have elbow pain, usually what happens is we have either an upstream or a downstream problem, meaning that it's usually gonna be a wrist mobility or shoulder mobility issue. So. One of the drills that I like to recommend when dealing with that kind of pain is a shoulder car. So cars means controlled articulated rotation. And all that means is that we're gonna take the shoulder through a full range of motion. So if I'm standing here, you guys have my side angle, right? I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna think thumb to the sky right now. I'm gonna go all the way up till my shoulder gets, or till my, till my bicep gets right by my ear, right? And I have my thumb pointing back behind me. Then I'm gonna rotate my thumb inward as hard as I can, right, opening up the arm, and then I'm going to sweep back and continue rotating my arm all the way back to this position here, which is extension, okay? So we're going through the full range of motion and full rotation of the shoulder, okay? If I do the other arm so you guys can get a different angle, right, all the way back, rotate in as hard as I can. I don't want to arch my back, I want to make sure I keep my belly anchored down. And I'm gonna rotate all the way back into that full extension, come back, reset, do it again. You don't wanna go fast through these. It's called a controlled articulated rotation, which means that you wanna have intent behind the movement. Move slow, find the end range. Your end range might be here. That's totally okay. Start rotating and trying to find that end range. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna cue our bodies that it's okay to move into these end ranges of movement, okay? So, controlled articulated rotation or shoulder cars are number one. Second drill that we like to work on is a reverse fly, is what you call it, or a banded pull apart, okay? So it just depends on um, what kind of equipment you have. In this case right now, I have a, a cable machine. So you can go to any gym, usually, and find something like this. Um, we wanna go ahead and set our cables to a height like around chest height or a little bit above. Um, you don't even really need handles for this, but what we're gonna look for here is a really lightweight, right? In this case, like the lightest that this has is 10 pounds. So I'm gonna grab with my opposite arm. So I'm grabbing the left with my right and the right with my left, okay? And what I want you guys to pay attention to is my upper back here. I'm standing in front facing them, crossing these, these uh, cables. I'm gonna pull apart the cables while I squeeze my upper back together, okay? A few more reps right here, squeezing the upper back together as I pull the cables back, okay? Uh, if we were gonna do this with a band, what you would do is anchor the band on whatever object in front of you. So like I could use, for instance, this thing, and then I can anchor the band and do it this way, right? Or I can also just hold a band and open the band apart. Those big, long jump stretch bands are a great option for this. Um, and then the key thing, again, is making sure that the shoulder blades are retracting. You kind of want to imagine like 
pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades. And what this is gonna do is, when we're like on the computer, we're roasting, sometimes we're in like hunch positions, or, or you know, like we're, we're kind of working here, and again, that scooping motion, we wanna start strengthening the upper back and the back of the shoulders to support the system up here. If my shoulders are starting to be rounded, right, I need to work the back or the posterior muscles so that I have good position and posture while I'm roasting, right? As much as possible, we wanna have the shoulders in line with the ears. If you find that your head and your shoulders are forward, then that's a good cue for us to start working on that shoulder strength. And the best one is to start with the pulling exercises because humans primarily get pushing exercises and not as much pulling. So, reverse flies or banded pull parts is drill number two. The third drill, which is actually a combination of two, is going to be a shoulder blade pull up or a shoulder blade push up. So, what that means is, we're gonna find a pull up bar, right? In this case, I have this on uh, this cable machine right here. I'm gonna grab my bar and I'm gonna hang, dead hang. So you'll notice that when I dead hang right here, the shoulders are up by my ears, right? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to pull my ears away from the shoulder by using my lats, these muscles under my armpits, and my back, right? I'm squeezing those shoulder blades again, like I mentioned, okay? So hanging, shoulders are by the ears, and I'm gonna pull the shoulders by the ears, okay? Just like this. And we're just working on, again, articulating this movement right here and teaching our body that these positions are good for it, okay? Um, not only that, when we dead hang, we're stretching out this lat muscle, which gets really tight over time, um, especially from just not using it very often, okay? In the same way that we have a shoulder pull-up, we can also do a shoulder push-up, okay? And so a shoulder push-up, I'm gonna elevate the surface here. Let's say, you, you know, you, you don't have the strength maybe to uh, do it from the floor, and that's okay, right? We can do this up against the wall or on, a, uh, on something elevated like a box or a bench. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock out my elbows here, and then same idea. I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades together so my, shoul my shoulders retract, and then I push away, right? Shoulders retract, and I push away. So we're just working this squeezing of the upper back and pushing it away and then getting our shoulder to get some movement that it doesn't generally get, right? More often than not, we pull into ourselves. But we are very bicep or triceps dominant and we wanna make sure that a lot of this is coming from our primary movers connected to the shoulder. So learning this, right, and learning this, we're able to move the shoulder in many directions is what we want. We're just trying to feed movement into the system, okay? So one more, right? Push up position, you can do this on the ground, a wall or a bench, squeeze the shoulder blades, push away. Try to avoid bending the elbows, that becomes a push up. We're just trying to use it, our shoulder blades, or our scapula, right? Here, pull the shoulders away. Pull the shoulders away, okay? So those are our three shoulder drills or roasters. Try them out, as always. If you have any pain associated with any of the movements, or if you know you have an injury or something that you need to consult with a doctor with, please do that first before you go on. These are just recommendations that most people should be able to do, okay? Happy roasting, stay healthy. That was the shoulder series from this article. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Kevin and I are working on videos for the other sections of this article, hip mobility, stability exercises, and functional strength as well, which if you haven't picked up a copy of Coffee People Zine, the theme of this issue, issue 21, is fire, and it focuses on content about and by coffee roasters. I'll put a link in the description below, so check that out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more coffee roasting content. Cheers!